All right. So we're live. Welcome back. Tuesday evening, trampled underfoot time. Welcome aboard. Well, we are your hosts, Mark Lindsay and Eloy Escajedo. Mark's over there on the West Coast of the United States. And I'm over here on the East Coast of the United States. And um, yeah, we do this. You know, I had a lot of fun with the last topic. I mean, there was a little bit of spicy, slightly modern controversial. I mean, it hasn't been controversial for the past like thousand years, but um, whatever. Well, I'm over uh, stating that. But I kind of like, you know, um, touching on things that have a little bit of elastic, you know, friction or puzzlement to things because it just spices a little bit up, you know? A little bit of edge to it? Yeah, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of the mysterious, a little bit of the scratch your head, you know, and we, we, we see how well we can skate on thin ice and then backpedal if we get too close to the edge or hear it cracking. Yeah. <laughs> Who exactly. knew this was such an athletic program? <laughs> Of course, I can come up with euphemisms all day long, walking the tightrope, et cetera, et cetera. But it's all the same. I don't know. I, I The older I get, the less I really care. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, there are certain topics we will not discuss, and that's all there is to it. But I think you can get close to them. Yeah, you can, you can sort of skirt the edges of the, the perimeter of the, uh, the landmine. And some things just need to be said. I mean, you know, I mean, you and I are both fans of history. We both like to dig into that thing. Me more on a, I don't know, maybe esoteric level. I'm, uh, I like the, the way the language was formed and how it's evolved over the years. And I also like, you know, physical geography and uh, where people migrated to and where they came from and what have you. And just historical events. I like that as well. And the thing that we all have to remember is, is that you can't change it. It's already happened. You don't have to like it. Nobody has to like it. But we're choiceless. And the only thing we can do is accept it. It happened. And it's a lot of things. It's just time for us to move on. You know, yeah. why do we continue to fight 500-year-old fights? I mean. Yeah. yeah. When we're talking about colonization and such right well when we're talking about basically everything i mean, I mean you know we we went through a period of about oh boy about 400 years of uh exploration and colonization and then finally decolonization and all the political upheaval and wars that were fought during that 400 years, you know, the, the, the earth's, the public's mindset has basically changed and that conquest is no longer cool, you know, which is why you had mortal enemies come to an agreement on Antarctica, Antarctica, nobody owns it, you know, and that just wouldn't have happened 200 years ago. But an agreement was reached. I mean, you're talking the Soviet Union and the United States. Everybody agreed we are not going to try to take and possess this continent. You can set up a research station all you want, and we'll do the same. And we came to that agreement, you know. I guess this is the good moment or best moment to bring up the fact that there's a hidden doorway in Antarctica that reaches the center of the Earth. But yeah. And that's where the whales go to hide every year. You know, they did find... <laughs> they, they did find... Um, there was this... Um, they do these uh, boring sample. Mm -hmm. And do you hear that? Yeah, I've, I've heard it for a while. You pushed the button and that was Vigo's cue. It's showtime. <laughs> He's shaking it. He's scratching. He's jumping up and down, clacking with his little... Hooves, yeah, because they sound like hooves just about. Um, they discovered when they brought up, put a camera down in through the pipe, and you can see it on YouTube, so it's got to be true. Um, they 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 put, a, they put a camera down and it went down, 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 
and it was some scientific thing. And they dis they saw a movement. And with the light, it's like a little shrimp like thing. Mm -hmm. And it grabbed onto like the inner pipe, core, mm -hmm. whatever, and was just hanging out, checking it out. Mm -hmm. But they were like all amazed because it's so darn below underneath where life, they would not expect it. And they said, if that's there, this place that's so like just unhospitable has it has to be teeming if they found that it has to be teeming with life they said well, everywhere we have found water we have found life on earth so you know it, it's quite possible that that deep in the ground is what it takes to have a temperature that could sustain life I mean, the the largest, and this is weird, man, but the largest native um, creature to Antarctica is a wingless midge. It's a little fly like a gnat, but it has no wings. That's the largest native creature to Antarctica. Penguins are not native. They're sea creatures. They spend most of their lives at sea. They come ashore in Antarctica. They also come ashore in South America. But they're seabirds. They spend most of their life at sea. Same thing with uh, seals and anything else that happens to come ashore. So they're just migratory. Yeah. But they're not native to Antarctica. Yeah. When um... So uh, what I'm getting at is maybe... That deep is how deep you have to go to be able to support subterranean life. I mean, we've got bugs and worms and insects and stuff like that around here. I mean, just about every soil. Yeah. Well, I thought it was interesting. I don't know, like, how uncommon, but they were, at least in the video, they were surprised. Yeah. That it was there um, and that it was such a developed creature. Mm -hmm. It's not like a... It's 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 an it's an important developed creature that's found down deep down there. So and then they said, if this is here, all sorts of stuff has has to be here. It just simply has yeah. to be because considering you know how deep down, I forget sure. the the, but I, I found it super cool, mm -hmm. and I, I was I don't know how I ended up there, but um, YouTube rabbit hole. I it know was how a, it goes. It was a YouTube rabbit hole, but um, they 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 do say that there's a. By the way, I don't know how I don't know how for, how much further I can pull stuff out of my hat uh, from Antarctica, but I'm I'm giving it my best go here. I've got a couple of things, but I don't know how long that could last with that Antarctica information. Um, how about you? Well, it, but it opens the door for all kinds of discoveries. I mean, the more we discover on this planet, the more we discover we don't know about it. I mean. Very, very little of the seabed has been explored, relatively speaking. So we just simply don't know what's down there. And I don't know that anybody has thought about how deep can insects and invertebrates burrow? Oh. How deep can they dig and how deep do they want to dig? I mean, obviously, the geology has to have something to do with it because they're not going to tunnel through uh, solid basalt you know, volcanic rock. Yeah. But if there is soil that they could dig through, why wouldn't they dig through it? Yeah. I mean, you know, wherever you can find um, nutrition to sustain you and wherever you can find water to sustain you, why not? I mean, um, so, so to, to mention the thing, I think I don't want to throw, I, I think I was sort of like, surfing the uh, antarctic thing because i ran into a into the argument the flat earth thing at, uh -huh. at again and there's a video with the debunking of the flat earth people that's a pretty solid go at, at it because he lays it all out because for years they they've been playing back and forth or at least mm -hmm. they haven't gone for the kill mm -hmm. um and this guy goes for the kill. He goes for the jugular. Mm -hmm. And he does it in a way that that is pretty brutal 
and effective. Um, however, to be fair to the flat earthers and, and to be unfair, actually to be fair to the round earthers, to be fair to both of them, because it because the truth is is as fair as you can get. At least in my opinion, the guy that's debunking the flat earth people, he freaking knocks it out of the park, right? Back to back. But in some instances, he was taking low shots, um, making assumptions of his own, even though he's got the solid stance. But within his solid stance, he didn't need to take low shots. What I would call, I don't want to call it insulting one's intelligence, but he kind of took the easy way around certain arguments that the flat, there are arguments that the flat earth people make that are interesting because it takes a little bit more thought to, and, and I'm as a complete novice, just spectator, um, but that they're, they're, they're valid questions that need to be attacked properly. And this guy kind of like, you know, he did his job. He did his job. But um, anyways, with that said, so I, I like a fair fight. Mm -hmm. I like a fair fight. That that's why that's why a firearm's always, always a good thing. Um, I like a fair fight. You don't want to battle Andre the the the, the three story giant, you know, with a little slingshot. Um, although it did work for for David. Yeah. Uh, but it once. But you can do worked. anything once. Yeah, he, he got it once, right? <laughs> but try that 10 times consecutively yeah. and see if that's, you know, so let's let's be clear on that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the, the part of the video, I think it was in that video, is that back in the 1930s or 40s or 50s, I don't remember exactly, but um, a, a U.S. Um, ship explore, exploratory mission went to Antarctica and they encountered this wall which is still there. It's a wall, right? Mm -hmm. So the edge of Antarctica is caked with ice. Yeah, it's called a glacier, yeah. You know, well, well, let's be, no, no. A glacier is one thing. Mm -hmm. When you reach the shores of Antarctica, you have the landmass mm -hmm. covered with all the ice. And so what I'm getting at is that when they got there, he mentions in his writings that he could not cross this impenetrable ice wall, which towers and it goes all around, mm -hmm. you know, for miles and miles and miles. Antarctica is not a small place. It's mm -hmm. huge. And so the flat earthers took that. Latch told of it. Okay. You understand? To mean mm -hmm. that there's a wall and then beyond it, you know, and, and, and mind you, I don't know because I've never been to Antarctica, right? So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't freaking know, but the the point is that that they took that and created this whole thing with it. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm like you. I'm a pedestrian. I'm just kind of watching them fight it out. But I have to say, looking at some of the arguments going on, you have to wonder how many of these people are just egging it on to keep the argument alive. Oh, it makes for good YouTube entertainment. Yeah. Exactly. And that, that's what I'm getting at. How many of these people are just throwing this out there to keep the argument going? I'll give you an example. There is, uh, There are two main theories about how the moon was created. Okay. okay. And then in the late 90s, early 2000s, I don't remember which, somewhere around in there, a new theory was proposed that it wasn't a collection of matter that came together separately and was captured in Earth's gravitational field and went into orbit. And it wasn't pieces of the Earth caused by a collision with another planet uh, during the uh, solar system's formation. What happened was we captured it from Mars when Mars got close to us in the early formation so uh, of the of the. Uh, solar system so we basically stole it from mars the fun part of this is the people who came up with this theory don't believe it themselves they freely and openly admit that they just came up with that theory to keep the argument going and now it's become part of the uh it well it's a theory nobody can prove it or disprove it 
And their assertion is, we don't believe it. We don't think it's true. But we're keeping, we're sticking with this theory just because we don't want it settled. We want to keep the argument going. Wasn't it? <laughs> it it's a funny thing, right? But isn't that like in a roundabout way, we latch on to things or we're, we inherit certain ideas that we just continue on. And then the origins of it, we totally forget. I know oh, yeah. we've we've sort of touched upon this, but I'll oh, just we're, share. We're, humans are experts at that. We take a little bit of information, make a few wild leaps, and our mind is made up. Well, see, that's the problem, that all of a sudden, so I'll give you an example. And by the way, I don't know the origin of it. Mm -hmm. I guess I could look it up and figure it out. But so growing up, I remember... And, and, and by the way, when I tell this thing, the important key here of why I'm telling it is that I, I was I was given different pieces of information that come from who knows where and all together created a little mini novel of information that could easily come to me, handed to me, and then I hand it down to the next yeah. generation and and yet no one knows. So I lost like a toy or something. Mm -hmm. And I went crying to my mom. Mom, I've been looking for it. I'm sure you've had this happen where you're looking for it everywhere, missing mm -hmm. toy. I was looking everywhere for this freaking toy. I don't even remember what the toy is, but I remember this moment because of what my mom said next. She said, no, no, son. She, she stopped me and she says, no, no, son. Here's what we'll do. It's missing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, and she took like a, a, a um, like a little piece of string cloth. Mm -hmm. and she says we're gonna take this cloth, and we're gonna tie it. Notice what she told me. We're gonna tie it around the the leg of the chair, the um, dining room chair, and we're gonna tie. I think it was San Dimas, the Saint San Dimas, or something San Dimas, or something like that. And we're gonna tie it, and we won't let it go until you find or your your toy is found mm -hmm. and i'm a little kid and she tied the thing on the leg and i'm looking at it i'm mm -hmm. a little kid and i can't tell you exactly my belief level of that working was at the time if you asked me and i was honest me reflecting back i wasn't a big big believer that that was working even at, at a little age it just seemed like arbitrary and stuff um but then again i believe my mom so i don't so she tied it and leave it and i left it and i don't remember if i found the toy or not but the point is that she got my worry past me but in that saying she gave me the name of some sort of spirit thing or saint or I don't know. I don't know what it is. She gave me a method that would resolve said problem. Mm -hmm. And that created an, an event that I remembered to this day because I'm telling you. Which I don't know what the freaking story of it is. Obviously, I don't believe, you know, but she did it. Now, I can't believe. I can't believe that my mom did it wholeheartedly believing she did it more to ease my worry. I'm assuming that because it makes no, it would make no sense to me um, that it was like, you know, this is, it, this is really going to work, son. Come on. We, I got the solution for you. So that's, that's what I was, uh, I wanted to, to share. That was two things. That was number one, showing you that she took you seriously and that she cared. Number two, that was action. She was taking some sort of action. Now, whether or not you believe that was going to get your toy back, you did feel better, right? I, If I look, think back, yeah, something was going to happen, and hopefully... Mission accomplished. Yeah. Mission accomplished. That's what moms do. <laughs> That's what moms do. I mean, you know, moms and grandmas. <laughs> grandmas are experts at it, man. But it's taking some form of action. And you felt better because of it. Whether or not you ever got your toy back, I don't know. 
who you knows? probably would have found it eventually. Yeah, who knows what the... But, you know, the gist is that I received information of something. Now, not everybody is going to... No. Take that into their adult life. No. And believe and continue to believe it and stuff. But... Well, go ahead. Let me say... Let me back you up just slightly because maybe not that specific kind of a thing. But humans, even, I mean, especially adults, do still take that with them into adulthood and throughout their entire lives. It just depends on the context. There are certain things. Now, if you're in your 40s, if somebody were to do that to you today, you'd be like, man, this is not getting me back my whatever I'm looking for. <laughs> what are we doing here? But if a doctor gives us a sugar pill and we don't know it's a sugar pill, we have faith in that. It's placebo effect. We know the name of it, but it works. We, well, see, yeah. we don't know why it works, but we do know that it works. We also know that two sugar pills work better than one sugar pill. We also know that a saline injection works better than any sugar pill. Isn't that amazing? So we are able to take in information. Now, they, <laughs> they, they really do not understand how it works, only that it does. In that th there's kind of almost a reverent appreciation for medical treatment. And you have a dramatic action being taken. So... I'll give you an example. When I was having my gallbladder issues before I got my gallbladder taken out, I was taking, I would take a dose of Pepto-Bismol because I thought I was fighting an ulcer. And within about 10 minutes, it would calm down for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Pepto-Bismol doesn't have anything to do with the gallbladder. It was placebo effect. I'll take this now. I'll feel better. I know that now. There is no physical or physiological effect on the gallbladder by Pepto-Bismol. There isn't. So it could only be placebo effect. This hurts. This will fix it. And it did for a while. Yeah. You know. So, but that belief in taking action and the more dramatic it is. I mean, you hear of cases of pacemakers working before they're turned on. People have had a, a, you know, a dramatic, traumatic experience with a surgery and you feel you're taking care of. It's not something we can control. It's something to do with the brain and we don't fully understand it. I think it, it uh, I think it's in the realm to me that unknown is in the realm of what what some would call spirituality. I know to many that that's a no-no, but in my mind that crosses into the realm of just the mystic, right? Um, yeah. I'm not going around jumping up and down calling everything mystic, but I'm saying is that I'm quite prepared to to say that there's certain things that are so fantastical that have no explanation. I'm sure that there could be an explanation as technology increases and such, but not everything. I don't believe that the end result is everything is technic. Uh, I think at some point everything converges into it not being just a methodical technical thing. I think that at some point everything becomes Beyond what we're capable of now, I know this is a stretch for a lot of people, but I think that at some point, all these things that are discoverable scientifically and so on be, become a wash into beyond our not beyond our control currently. Mm -hmm. And what I mean, but at some point, we're talking like beginning of the universe type things. It it just it's it's mystical. Well, you know, at some point, and that's why they call it faith, and that's great. I mean. You know, there are going to be some things that can't be discovered just simply because they already happened 
and there was no way of knowing exactly how it happened. We can hypothesize, we can study, and we can kind of reverse engineer how it would have to happen in order to be what it is. But that's all it's ever going to be. We don't know because we didn't see it. And even the scientists who put forth this hypothesis will tell you we don't know. Our testing says this, that this is not 100% the case. You know, we get into the... We, it's, uh, when we think about science, our technical ability, our technology and our technical ability and our knowledge has basically gone through a massive spike and upswing since just before the Industrial Revolution. And medical science especially kind of just plundered along until like the mid-1800s before new discoveries just mm -hmm. exploded. I mean, medical science is still fairly new. So in the timeline of human existence, it's a hiccup. It's all still very, very new. And we learn more from studying accidents and injuries and illnesses than we do from studying healthy people. We still don't know. We know very, very little about the brain. And we only learn about the brain by studying people who have had an injury or a disease or some other form of, uh, well... Yeah. Can't put it nicely, defect. I mean, whether it be a tr physical trauma or a chemical accident or, you know, electrocution struck by lightning, something like that. I mean, we only know what we can observe. I, I so. just um, truly, I think that um, we've said this before, but I think we only know what we know. And on the shoulder of giants, obviously, mm -hmm. and we're and we benefit from all these things because you can go and say science. Um, the these facts have been, you know, mold over, and we hold these things to be pretty evident. And here's all the data if you want to delve into it. But we have the luxury of saying, okay, these scientific facts have been worked on by people beyond, you know. Oh yeah time you know in, in the past so we can safely say that like you know the moon is up there and so like we have all these things sure. so it's 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 we're benefiting from all this work done before us and so without us doing the actual work because if we had to start right. from zero right we'd be screwed because it's very easy for me to think to myself sitting here talking to you which is freaking mind to be humble it's mind blowing the simple fact that I can easily take for granted the fact that I'm talking to you from my home in Sweetwater through a microphone that captures my voice from with a camera through electronic impulses, signals going through like lines of like little metal mm -hmm. and we're exchanging ideas. Anybody in their right mind would ignore all that and get on with it and do what everything is meant to be used for mm -hmm. and not pay attention to all the details of, of that. But if you, one were to be, to sort of take a moment of humility in this great, if I had to build all these things to get to the point where I can talk to you, I mean, I'd be crap out of luck. Um, so I think it's just fantastical that we have these abilities and I know it's a buildup from it, people throughout time, but um, I just find the whole thing, the yeah. whole experience of life that way, jaw dropping, shocking. I don't yeah. see it like, Oh yeah, we're alive. And here's Mark Lindsay. Yeah. And here's our, yeah. our audience over there. And, and ho, ho, ho. I see it as, and especially when you focus on it, as like holy smokes and i'm thinking but see you have that inquisitive mind and a lot of people don't most people don't you know 
an inquisitive mind is a mind that wants to learn, wants to see, and wants to experience. And I personally, I'm I'm of the same um, persuasion, I guess you'd say, because you know, I still study English, not as a full time thing. I'm not going to school for it. But you'd figure after sixty years, you know, I could just put it to bed and say, yeah, all right, I I think I know enough. No, because it's constantly uh, evolving, you know? Yeah. And it does interest me. So why not keep going? I mean, it, it, we an inquisitive mind, I think, is a mind that is not ready to sit down and, you know, watch the bimbo commercials on TV and just try to keep itself from falling out of your ear. You know, I, I yeah. just, you know, I, I, I want to keep going. The minute I stop trying to learn is the minute I get old. And, yeah. you know. There, there is one thing, though, with that, um, where if one ponders all that, like I've ended up pondering so many different things. And I've, one thing I've realized, and I'll share this with you, I, we've talked about this, but is that it, it, people are dangerous. Um, and what I mean by that is that, and you can't live your life, you know, I've talked with Greg about this a lot. I don't underestimate the ability for the most simple interaction, not amongst friends, right? There's a, a level. I'm talking about when you go out there to meet the day and you run across the endless amounts of people they have their endless amounts of problems and agendas and personalities and um, thresholds of what they find acceptable and their cunning or their lack of discretion or um, their, uh, their propensity to, to um, do unethical things. Um, the ability not to have any sort of compassion uh, or just all these layers of things. So I find that the math, like generally speaking, nothing, but is 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 a, a very risky. Like I think Frodo Frodo Baggins said. I think it was Frodo Bil or, or Bilbo Baggins. Was it Bilbo? Bilbo said it's it's a dangerous thing. That something to the. I'm paraphrasing. It's very dangerous stepping out your door in the morning, and then the adventure began. Um, and it was quite the ad adventure. So I kind of, um, yeah, I have, I, 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 I have that with me and I, I understand it. It's not reasonable to, but I, yeah, I, I am very skeptical, skept, skept, I can't even say it, uh, skeptical, <laughs> skeptical <laughs> of, of, um, of strangers in general, as benign as one might see. That person's carrying some. Who knows what the heck in their mind they think the rules of engagement is? Oh yeah, and and I know, I know it's it's not the typical you know, thing to think. I we have talked about this before, but I keep coming back to. I think what you're dealing with is a big city mentality, and you have to, because the rules for life in the big city are completely different from life in a smaller town and life in the country. I mean, we lived in this house for eight years. I started locking my doors two years ago. You know, we we have never had anything pilfered from the yard. We've never had any problems, any negative run-ins with any of our neighbors. It's yeah. a slower pace of life. We're willing to let the guy go in front of us in the grocery store line and strike up a conversation with him. You know, it is you, if I tell a joke, I expect the guy behind me to laugh. You know, it, it's just, it's unavoidable. It's a smaller town. It's a slower pace. You don't have to put up that defense shield to go outside, you know, but I grew up in the San Francisco Bay area where you do have to have that defense shield. You've yeah. got so many million people packed in a small area. And everybody is trying to get from point A to point B. You have to be defensive. You have to be on defense at all times. Because you're right. You don't know what the other guy's going to do. You, you simply don't. And they can look. You, a person can present themselves as, as very 
um, say approachable. So we've talked about mm -hmm. in the last episode, actually, like um, a smile, you know, the eyes will shrink and see a little bit of gloss and you can see that there's a disarming. And, and I find that that's true. Mm -hmm. However, there's a truckload of people out there that present as what you would interpret to your personal rules of engagement as a, a person that's that's uh, respectful of personal distance mm -hmm. and would not be fraud uh, commit any fraud or be conniving or anything, and yet are to and I've had this experience. So I'm in my forties uh, and I've lived enough that I know. And I was very I don't want to call it gullible, but I was taught a level of just very old school. I was taught very old school. I don't take an opportunity um, to do damage to people um, in order to feel to get my fill. Mm -hmm. As an example, it's it's a it, I find no thrill in it. I find mm -hmm. zero. I don't need to cut well, someone down in order for me well, to your upbringing to feel good. I don't need to damage a person in order for me to feel like oh I got a few points. However, I will engage in that. Um, if I'm in that battle, sure, but it's not natural to me. Yeah. My natural place is to be honest and to receive, you know, and then work within that thing, but not, not everybody, but there's people that are very dangerous and conniving and evil on a, sure. you know, and so I've learned that and I, I'm not digging that. So when I'm out and about, you know, no matter if a person is, is smiling and this, and, um, I'll take it. I'll take it as 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 offered, but I I will keep my distance. I'm not playing in that. Yeah. I have to well, have you. You have to have your defenses up. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, you know there there are people like that around here too. I'm not trying to say that this is a coke commercial. You know there are people like that around here too, but they're easier to identify. You have the problem of the anonymity of crowds, because there are so many people. And it's a tourist area. Faces, I mean, you could go the you you have gone from childhood to now without seeing the same person twice. There's a few people that you continue to bump into just by chance. I mean, it's just coincidence. But you have met more people one time than you know simply because of the area that you live in. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I keep bumping into the same people over and over and over again, not on purpose. It's just when you see the guy who works at this restaurant back behind the counter serving sandwiches, it's not odd to bump into him down at the grocery store yeah, or at the gas station or something like that, because we all live in the same small little area. So. I'll give you an, an example of what happened. It, it kind of works with what you're saying in a way. I think that it'll work with it. But the other day, I, I might have told you I, I, I needed to get groceries. And um, so I, I had some other things to do that day. And that day, I continuously forgot to bring my mask with me. Mm -hmm. so every time I'd stop somewhere, I'd get out of the car and walk. And then I'd realize and I'd walk back. Mm -hmm. And then I did it again and again. The final time, and I didn't think much of it. I don't know if it was the radio. I, I was thinking that my window doesn't roll down. I don't know. Like in between all that stuff, I'm like, crap, man, it's hot. I need my window to roll down. And and stuff like. And I get to the Publix and I freaking get out the car and walk into the freaking place. And I'm not gonna lie, as I walked in, I grabbed my the little cart thing and I'm walking, and as I walked into the first aisle. I heard some per, uh, some lady say "Senor," and I didn't think that they were speaking to me. Which later uh -huh. I found out that they were, but they were like "Senor, Senor," and I totally the most perfect. There was no. I just kept going. Yeah. And as I'm walking down the aisle, an an, an employee lady's walking. She says, oh, "Sir," she says, "Sir," and I said, "What?" And I looked at her and I was like, "What?" You know. And she she goes like this. <laughs> she goes like this with her. With her with her hand on her face, indicating mask, uh -huh. and I, I for a moment I was like, "What? Why is she?" 
for a slight moment. I was like, uh -huh. why is she rubbing her hand on her face? I was like, is she like, what's wrong with her? And just for a slight moment. And then my little light bulb, it was <laughs> clink, 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 turned on. And I touched my face and I said, oh my good. I said, oh my good. You know what? I'm so sorry. I, this For a whole year, I've been wearing it with no problem. In fact, by the way, I kind of dig the freaking mask because that way you don't have to... Um, talk to people frankly I, I hate to say it so I, I don't care if we use it forever i mean i have no qualms with the freaking mask it's just that i forgot the darn thing and um so she i said oh i'm gonna go to the car and i'll be back and she says no 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 go to the uh um what, what do you call the uh the uh, the front office and and we'll give you a mask and said are you sure and i was like thank goodness i don't so i go up to the the darn thing and they weren't amused that they needed to find a mask for me. I mean, they had them there, but the ladies' faces were like, there was like a little bit of, of, of like <laughs> negativity. I, I don't know what, where it was coming. She gave me the mask. I put the mask on. I went and did my shopping, went to the, to the line. Uh, and there's that lady there. And it happened to be the same lady that had called me from uh -huh. the get-go. And, and I said, and I didn't know it was her. And I said to her, you know what, today it's funny. I've been forgetting my mask all day long. And she looks at me and she says, yeah, you didn't hear me calling you when you came in. And I said, no, I mean, I did hear her, but I didn't know it was for me. And I, I, I put yeah. the two together. So I said, no. And she says, yeah, I was calling you. You know, this is a very dangerous thing to do. And she started giving me the freaking the whole script. And I said, oh, but you know what? Lady, I, to be honest with you, I totally forgot. And she says, well, I've never forgotten. She told, she wouldn't let me go with it. You know, and who cares? But I was trying to, to play the, I'm sorry, to see if she would have in her heart uh -huh. sufficient, you're forgiven to uh -huh. give me while we're paying, right? While we're doing yeah. the thing. So I'm playing to see if she's willing to say, you know what, sir, it's okay. She didn't give me a break. She doesn't know me from Adam. Uh -huh. She didn't give me a she in her little judgment, her little court of opinion. She convicted my ass up the freaking river. And I was like, man, this lady won't even, and I'm paying your money, and she won't even be like, you know what, sir? It's okay. No, no, she didn't give me any breaks, man. So yeah, we have a know. big we have a big city where people don't know each other and stuff. I'm sure it would be yeah. different in a small town. Well, you know, that, well, no, it wasn't different. Remember my little uh, run in oh, with the lady in the parking lot. That's right. I mean, she was the same thing. It took me taking two steps towards her to get her away from my car, number one, and not in an aggressive manner, but it took me getting serious and telling her, get back and pushing my cart forward two steps so I could reach the door handle. You know, but, but it's just you're... one of those things. It's just so it's a little town, but she thought she had the right to harass me <laughs> and just no, that ain't gonna happen. No, but in your case, she went for the throat, man. She went for the juggler. Oh, well, she tried to jugular. Yeah. <laughs> the juggler, did she go for the juggler? Well, she tried to. <laughs> <laughs> But homie, don't play that. You know, you, you can't stress me like that. It's been done by experts. She was not an expert. It's like two steps. If you don't back off, I'm going to sneeze on you. See. And, see, you know, that, see that, that brought out the deer in the headlights look and she was gone. She couldn't move fast enough. You know, if the pavement hadn't been wet, her shoes would have been making sparks. The, the problem is that this is dangerous because, you know... Uh, it's one step. Sh it's a modern type. If you gave them pitchforks and torches and said, go kill all non mask wearers, bar none, you would have lynch mobs across the world in little like enclaves in cities and towns and, you know, of people dedicated to snuffing out the undesirables and it could be a person that total innocently just forgot they, and they're they, gonna lynch your ass <laughs> they could try they could well, try believe me well you know my point is that yeah. that people will take the mantle of the the hero or heroine yeah. um without yeah. the 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 benefit of all this other extra information like take it easy sister you know and that's that, that and that comes back to us 
I blame parents for that. I blame us not teaching our kids right. We are more concerned with being right than we are with being decent. And that's the problem. You know? I, I think you have, I think you, you know, I think that you have something there. I think that that's, that's a, an important thing to, to, because without the decency part, mm -hmm. there's no humanity in it. And it's just a cold. Yeah. I gotta factual. be right. And that's yeah. what I'm seeing just to bring this back to full circle. That's what I'm seeing between the round earthers and the flat earthers. I don't have a dog in the fight. I just don't care. You know, I've traveled. I've done my traveling. You guys have your silly little flame war. I just you've, don't care. You've traveled, but you've traveled on the flat earth. Whatever. I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. I had fun. You Let know? It, it, it's I, I'm not going to sweat the small stuff anymore because at the end of the day, does it matter? Let's just say, okay, the, the flat earthers are correct. Now what? Then so we what? have, no, that so if what? It, I'm going to answer that. Okay. If the flat earthers are correct, we can from this point on have flat earth day. That's an extra holiday on the calendar and we can have like fiestas. Okay, you might okay, you might be swinging me to your side, but my but but my point here is so what? <laughs> does it does it change anything? Do, does does it change anything? It's like no, it's, seriously, it, it's kind of like the guy, and I don't remember his name. I really I wish I could. He wrote out a mathematical formula to prove that one plus one equals two. And my question is, so what? Why did you feel the need to prove one plus one equals two? Because haven't we as a civilization developed far enough with all of our technical wonder that if one plus one didn't equal two, what are we supposed to do now? Yeah, Burn but, everything but, and start over? No, I, I get. Okay. So I get, <laughs> see, but so, I have, I, I, I have an intrinsic um, opposition to, in practicality, I get what you're saying because mm -hmm. you're using examples as, as the thing. But like, if we didn't know the difference between knowing about the pyramids or some sort of like village in 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 the middle of a, a jungle that we didn't know of, and mm -hmm. those things are important. Maybe they don't. Maybe we would still keep going regardless but as 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 a knowledge base it's an, it's good to know so it, what would actually what would it change you know i i think that we'd still be where we're at whether it's square round or triangle or whatever yeah so in that respect yeah but i mean it, it would be good I, to it, like if they discover that it, it's 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 you know. you know well okay now discovery and exploration are two are, are, are a different thing entirely yeah okay but they're not doing that. They're not exploring. They're not trying to prove their point with physical evidence. They're trying to prove their point with stuff that they found on the internet. Well, I can put up some wild stuff on the internet. In fact, I might. You know, I saw I saw a, a, a meme. Oh, gosh, it's been 10, 11 years ago. Of a guy. It was a screen capture of some dude's tweet. And he said, if I ever live to be 100 years old, I'm just going to make something up when people ask me for my secret. Like tell them I ate a pine cone every day. Yeah. I can make stuff up like that too. You'll start a, you'll start a whole religion. I'll, I'll, I'll get Steve to help me with a website. I don't know about a religion, but I will have followers. No, I'll get Steve I, to set me up a website. I will do everything I can to get people to believe that. So maybe no, no, I should. No. No, let me take that to the next. No, I, that's too good to let alone. I, I, I'm telling you right now, we don't know this for a fact, but it just as well could go the route of the freaking pineapple, it, the, the the church of the pineapple, and then it'll be like a pineapple on top of a building, and then pineapple shirts, and then the whole society, and then p pineapples and people. And somebody the other day on the news, 10 o'clock, somebody was destroying a pineapple orchard, 
and mm -hmm. uh, and people shocked and protests and then the pineapple and then the e economic impact of the pineapple and everybody the and, and pineapple shipping through throughout the the Mediterranean yeah. and and pine and the first pineapple in space and then pineapple and then the, the Egyptians yeah. and, the, and and pineapple but at the same time so i could easily see, i could i could i could i could totally see that and yeah. i'm not even jo i'm i'm joking but i could see that and and the sad thing is that that you can replace with any number of things that we do today as a society anyhow you could it's I as mean, irrelevant and as lame mm -hmm. as just that and just by presenting pineapple as the the all knowing <laughs> pineapple that we must you know dude if you made a t-shirt with a pineapple on it <laughs> and sent it to six of your youtube friends and just, just you know just do me a favor and wear this on your videos and get people to you know just don't say anything about it people will start asking you for the shirts because if you see like 8 or 10 12 people who are otherwise disconnected from one another, all doing the same thing, it becomes a trend. And when more people start doing it, it's a movement. And pretty soon there's going to, you're right. There will be pineapples every damn every, dude, every dude, people, I mean, you'll see them from fricking East LA mm -hmm. all the way to fricking New York city. You yeah. know, you, you, it, it will be, and it's, people write songs about it. And by the way, you may look at the pineapple now and think, oh, it's pineapple, but not in this scenario. I mean, this is a very important part of this. If, if not for the pineapple, society would break down. I mean, yeah. I'm telling you, I could exactly. totally see. All the vitamin C in the pineapple, just bring up the health benefits and make something up. They don't have to be real. Oh, yes, it'll reduce your cholesterol. The studies have shown, and you don't have to quote a study. Nobody else does. Why do I have to? If you, you know? want to lose, if you want to lose weight, put a pineapple <laughs> yeah. in your pants. A and pineapple walk in every garage, you know. And this is message is brought to you by the National Pineapple Board. A pineapple a day. That's all we ask, dude. I could totally, <laughs> I could totally, I could, I have no issue totally seeing that. Yeah. Um. Okay. So look, before I, I just want to, I, I want to ask you, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Since we were kind of talking about the moon and this and that, I'm going to ask you a, 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 just a few little questions. If you were chosen to uh, put a time ca time capsule together so that either launch the space or people in the future, um, and you had to pick a song and the format that it's going to be able to be listened to for future let's say a hundred thousand years into the future or whatever you had to pick a device and the actual format device and what song one song or you could pick if you want okay. one or two what what, what, what what would it be okay what would be the purpose of the song to represent humanity okay i'm sorry yes so the purpose of it is to represent your experience on this planet here now in your lifetime, the things that encapsulated that you best would want to represent. Um, I know that's a, I know that's a spoonful to get in one song. Yeah. But if you, if you had to pick two it throwaways would, that, that would kind of represent it, what would okay. they Okay. It would be on vinyl. Interesting. With a record player that had a speaker, so it could be turned on, and you know, okay. Um, that also gives me an A side and a B side. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say A side only. No, well, you can do both if you want. If you have um, it, you one song to represent all of humanity. Oh man, see now I've got to think about whether my cynical side is going to talk. <coughs> Excuse me. My humorous side is going to talk or my attempt at being humorous is going to talk or my serious side. Um oh, Wow, that's a difficult one. My cynical side would be <laughs> welcome to the jungle. Um, okay. Really, you would pick 
I am Sean. That's that's my cynical side, and because of one line, "Welcome to the jungle," it gets worse here every day. That's my <laughs> cynical side talking. Um, I mean, he was talking about big city. Uh, yeah, and you know, most people live in big cities in this country. It's the truth. That's why they're you know. Yeah. Um, okay, let's fair see. enough. What would? But my my serious side. I don't think I would do anything with lyrics because lyrics are always going to be misheard, misread, or misunderstood. So I think it would have to be something instrumental. And I, so I think we're probably going back to something by Bach. But then again, part of me says that may just be showing off. You want the but, best of the best, huh? Yeah. You want something that uh, indicates a serenity, a peacefulness, or, uh, but with a little bit of fun and humor to it. So the know. best, so for you, the, the best representation, and by the way, I, I have to, so I was shocked with your pick of Welcome to the Jungle, but I can see why with the cynical. Um, I really like the Bach idea because it, it just, it, it's a grand it's 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 the 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 epitome of of reaching for the stars musically complex beautiful well, acoustic um there's a lot of emotion yeah but there's a lot of showmanship there's mm -hmm. a lot of it, it, it and there are no lyrics to get in the way there are no hidden meanings you know, I like, it's I like just, some... it's just technical. It's just technical ability, technical expertise. And, but leaves you kind of, uh, it, it, it doesn't evoke any negative emotions, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Fair enough. Next one. Cause it's a time capsule. Okay. What would be, you have one choice for the kids of the future to understand the one candy candy bar chocolate bar the one treat that you would put to represent again it could be you could do it selfishly or selfish selflessly or selfishly to represent you your particular or the world's thing or both or your experiences and it doesn't matter it's your choice okay. how flowery and poetic do you want me to be <laughs> It's a candy, so okay. All right. Well, I, you know, I, I, I. It's it's going to sound cliched, and it's going to sound like I'm being sappy, and I'm really, really not. Okay. okay. M and M's. Okay, that does represent. M and That's a big one. That's a big it's, one. It, it's more than one, so that they could, you know, more than one person could check it out. <laughs> no, they get one M and M. You just put the. Oh, okay. One big no. M and M. <laughs> I was thinking like a one pound bag, you know. No, they but, get they get their they get their fix, and it gets colors across to them. There's all kinds of different colors, but they're all great together or separately. We're, we're gonna look at these answers later after this. Yes, we. Are. Yes, we are. There's some so, interesting ones. Let um, me let, and I'm gonna edit this right. part of it out because I don't want to talk to the folks in the chat. Yes, throw your. Uh, suggestions yeah. in here too. You've got some good ones and we'll get into it when we talk to y'all. But yes, throw your suggestions in here too, please. So we'll we'll move we'll move on to the other thing in the time capsule for people in the future. And what would be your you have to choose a again mm -hmm. viewing device and a movie to represent this era through your lens, your taste, what medium and what movie? To represent this era. And your tastes. And you know, my your, taste in movies. Yeah, what you would want to push forward to the future so that when someone opens up that package... They yeah. would... Yeah, okay. It would have to be... Wow, see, now I'm a bad person to ask this because all my favorite movies are old. You well, know? it's gonna be any movie that you give them is gonna be super old because we're talking about yeah. Okay, years. well, all right. So, American Graffiti. It was my favorite movie as a teen growing up. 
um because i was uh, uh i loved hot rods and i loved the doo-wop music and you know the old rock and roll and it just represented life in a small town what their priorities were on one night over the summer i think that's an excellent. and i would do it on vhs because I want them to see the FBI warning <laughs> at the beginning to see what we dealt with. And I want that. Please recon, please be, be kind and rewind at the end. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. So VHS uh -huh. and, um, and that, I think it's a good, good, uh, pick. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, and so the final one, final one, okay. final one. What book would you put in that time capsule and send off a hundred thousand years in the or a hundred whatever thousand years in the future? Nineteen eighty four. Whoa, good one, Dang. Nineteen eighty four, because I want people to understand that there is such things as right and wrong. And I say the book because it needs the forward and it needs the appendix. Very good. The, the, right. movie, the movie doesn't touch either one of those. It leaves it all up to you. You need that forward and you need those appendixes. So. Appendices. Yeah. So I can picture some guy 100,000 years in the future sitting in his futuristic chair, popping M&M's into his mouth, listening to Bach in the background, playing through his VCR. Um, what was the, the movie? Uh, American, American Graffiti. American Graffiti. Mm -hmm. And on his lap is 1984. I think that if you took everything out of the equation, just took a snapshot of that, you would have a guy from back 20 years ago hanging out at home on a weekend mm -hmm. that's that me. is amazing that's me I, I love it i love it that was i think that that was my goodness that was great dude can so, i tell you well thank you but you know that's just what came to mind um wow it's and, and i can i can see his response after watching all of that and listening to all of that his response would be summed up in one sentence. So that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> the key here is also, so I, I love the whole thing because at the end of the day, what did you just do? You freaking take, took a snapshot with those to represent this time period. And frankly, there's, well, it's, to it's a point a, because Bach is really old. So, well, you know, well, but, you're right. And that's where I was going to say the next bit, which is that imagine all the information left out. It's, it's, it's impossible, but within what you did, you gave a representation well, of the best of, of things that you experienced that you thought were worth it. But let's turn it around and see, isn't that more or less what we do? For instance, if we come across a new tomb in Egypt, or a, a new pyramid on the Yucatan Peninsula, or uh, an undiscovered village in the rainforest. We're given a little, we, we've got a certain set of clues, and it's up to us to decipher what, because that represents daily life to them. Yes. So, you know, it all goes back to exploration. I mean, and I try to, you know, when you ask me those questions, those were kind of strange, but kind of cool. Um, I guess that basically just encapsulates my personality and me, you know. I mean, and then so. again, you were limited to choosing one of each, mm -hmm. but still you gave us enough. Like I could totally picture it, right? Mm -hmm. I could picture 20, 30 years ago, um, a dude sitting down and listening to all that stuff and definitely the snack, the, just definitely. Right. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's let's wrap this up. I I do want to uh, mention that we go live every Tuesday at nine thirty on the East Coast, 
6.30 on uh, the West Coast, and that's Trampled Underfoot Podcast uh, here on YouTube. And we also have a website where you can catch our past episodes. That's Trampled Underfoot Podcast on YouTube. Uh, um, dot com. Forgive me. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> um, you could you could catch our past episodes over on our website, which is trampledunderfootpodcast.com. dot com, and you just press that Wayback Machine button, and you can see all our past episodes. And we talk about a bunch of different uh, subjects from you know uh, popular culture, uh, history, and well, you'll check it out and you, you'll enjoy that. I, I I truly believe. And then we have our uh, Trampled Underfoot podcast page on Facebook. You could visit that and drop some comments. We post videos and images of things that we talk about during the show here as well. So um, we're also sponsored by Steve Nealon over at Harneal Media, your one-stop website shop. He doesn't like it when I say that, but it's the case. It's the truth. I'm going to get him to help me come up with some pineapple merch just as soon as we're done here. And so watch out for that. <laughs> Steve can help you do that. If you've got an idea for merch, for T-shirts, for hats, you know, uh, good grief, coasters, baseball caps, coffee mugs. He's your guy. He can help you get set up with a supplier that will print on demand, handle all the shipping for you, and you just sit back and let the money roll in. That's harnealmedia.com. Oh, did I mention he also does websites and is the sponsor, trampledunderfootpodcast.com. All right. Well, listen, you guys have a great rest of the week. We'll catch you right back here on Tuesday. That's Tuesday at 9 30 Eastern, 6 30 Pacific, Trampled Underfoot Podcast on YouTube. And we'll catch you soon. Be there. Okay, clean. You guys got some good stuff over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Steve was talking about the Church of the Flaming Pineapple. I like it. I like it. I like it. See, we have a pineapple, the, the, the yellow with the, the green top with the flaming background behind Dude, it. I don't, I don't I think like those, two, I don't think those two have ever been connected before. Have you, you've never roasted a pineapple? No, I don't think in the image. Mm -hmm. no, I've know. never roasted, I've never roasted a pineapple. See, I don't know that I would put those two together though, because I think that just the simple pineapple. Just, and you, you remember years ago, the golf shirts with the little alligator? Yeah. Do that. Look, do, do a pineapple. Lacoste? Yeah. Do a pineapple. Oh, no. Izod. Was it Izod or was it Lacoste? No, the alligator was Lacoste. Was it Lacoste? Okay. Just do a pineapple. And then, or, you know, uh, a bigger pineapple on the pocket or a big pineapple shirt and a pineapple hat. You know? wait, wait, wasn't it golfers used to use that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Or golf shirts is what I used to call them. Yeah. But, but they yeah. were used for like, going out and stuff at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, this, my dog said, says, uh, put space oddity on one side and farts on the other. Yeah. Well, you know, there's the space oddity. I don't know. That's pretty specific is the problem. And that's why I had a problem coming up with, um, any kind of a tune that had lyrics to it. Because it's hard to generalize with lyrics, you know? And besides, I don't know if you noticed or not, my pick for the movie, American Graffiti, uh, the cars and the music were the stars of that movie to me. So you get a flavor for all kinds of music with that movie. So Yeah, and, and also the culture of driving mm -hmm. down the, uh, the main... And mm -hmm. um, stopping at, you know, your 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 favorite eat. Oh uh, yeah, and the priorities of the day. I mean, the one kid, his priorities to drive around a cool car and try to pick up a girl. Another guy, the priority is to win a drag race. Another guy, the priority is to find the girl in the uh, white T bird before he ships off to college the next morning. The priority for the other guy is to 
reconnect with his girlfriend after he cheesed her off by suggesting they date other people while he was off to college, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, you see how lives get screwed up and fixed up over the course of 24 hours. It's, it's actually kind of a, it was a fun movie. Did you like so. the outsiders? Uh, I never saw the whole thing, so okay. I, I need to get it. I, I never saw the whole thing. I wow. like that movie. You know, it had that the greaser thing and, and all that. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, I did see the Lords of Flatbush. That was that was a depressing movie, but you know, I didn't see that one. Yeah, it was it was you didn't really miss much, you know. Uh, Steve Nealon says life is a lemon, and I want my money back. That's see, that's my cynical side too. I saw that and I almost started laughing, but I maintained composure. <laughs> You've heard that song by Meatloaf? No, you how haven't. It, no, or um, at least I don't know it by the title. I'll I'll send I'll find it and send you a link to it um, okay. later on. It's a song by Meatloaf. Life does is it a go, lemon, and I want my money back. Does it go like like this? Life is a lemon. I want to drive it all night long. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Nothing like that. Uh, Greg Snowcrusher. Okay, no, wait. Just my dog says, instrumental, great gig in the sky. Um, I considered that for a little bit. I also considered uh, Riviera Paradise by Stevie Ray. And um, what was the other one? Um uh, now, never mind. It's not important now. Love soul stinks. sacrifice. Soul sacrifice by Santana. That was the Lo other. love stinks. But I think going back to the classics kind of you know detaches and lets people come up with their own emotions rather than trying to you know push an emotion on somebody. The, the Bee Gees, dun, 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 the digital. Dun, dun, yeah. dun, dun. It wasn't the Bee Gees, but it was on the album. Dun, 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 dun. The, the 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 disco version of that um, Mozart. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, I do know what you're talking about. Okay. That was Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Oh, okay, okay. See, I'm a, I'm a little more highbrow than you think I am at times. Well, you know, it's a funny really. thing because <laughs> it, it's a funny thing though. Though um, you try to disassociate quickly from knowledge of it because it's so horrific, right? Oh no! You couldn't. You couldn't be alive during that time without knowing what that was. And you never. Be honest. Just for one. Could you please, for one second, just tell me the truth? And the truth would be that you back then, walking towards the bathroom, it was blasting out the radio, and you were combing your hair and said, "Oh yeah," and it was. Da -da 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 -da. And you, don't tell me you weren't stomping your feet to that, getting ready for that night out. Please, dude. I got married when I was seventeen. Okay, you were still going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I was 17. My parents had to sign for permission. Um, that my dating career was very short lived. So, um, but no, I didn't do any of that. Now, having Darn. said that, if you wanted to get anywhere with girls, you had to know some of that stuff and be willing to flip it over to that radio station if they that's what they wanted to listen to. Otherwise, you didn't get a date. So you had to know and learn the person that you were going to go out with and kind of figure certain things out. Are you trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. Are you going to sit there, bold face, and tell me that back then mm -hmm. you were busting out with the Bee Gees and you had the perm that everybody, for some reason, back then, it was the perfect, and it didn't matter what. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I have never had an afro in my life. <laughs> my hair is so straight and so fine, you couldn't afro this if you run four million votes through it. It just, well, I can't get it to comb, let alone do something like, no. No. But 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 you did see. Tell me the truth. You did see people that you would not have oh, yeah. expected. Oh yeah. That all of a sudden um, were bust busting out. Oh with yeah. Redheaded guys with freckles named Duffy walking around sporting a neon red afro. That was the style for a dude, while. Dude, how with great, dude. Platform <laughs> shoes, four inches tall, oh, and uh, the polyester, just you know, shining, glimmering in the sun. 
and 4,000 chains around your neck looking like the Mr. T starter kit, you know? Oh, my goodness. Dude. That was the thing. It's so horrible, and yet. Yeah. Well, I, uh, dude, I've said it several times. The dumbest thing about my generation was the way we dressed back then. Frank Zappa sang about he he had a song called Dancing Fool. Dancing I'm Fool. A dancing Fool. Excellent so, tune. It's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing is. is so awesome, dude. Anyways, can continue. I'm sorry. No, that was it. I mean, that was all there was to it. It was just it was it was pitiful. It was really really pitiful. Leisure Suit Larry. Is that from Three's Company? Um Oh, uh, that's Steve talking about Leisure Suit Larry. Leisure Suit Larry was a video game. Oh, okay. And um, he wore a white polyester. Le well, he had several colors, but his most famous was uh, the white polyester leisure suit. <laughs> and um, he was kind of seen as a uh, um, uh, just a, a, a creepy guy. You, um, let's see. I'm trying to think of his name, the character on Three's Company, Mr. Furley, Don Knotts' character yeah. on Three's Company, him. Yeah. That's him. funny. But more lecherous and more creepy. But that that character, either Leisure Suit Larry was based on Don Knotts as Mr. Furley in Three's Company, <clears throat> or I think Mr. Furley came first, Steve. Is uh, but one of the other was based off of one or the other but it was i mean it was just seen as low life you know scum <laughs> so you know obviously i was a baby in the mid 70s when mm -hmm. i was born but i did grow up through the mid you know and as i, I was I, I was watching the adults and stuff and i did see spectacular hats and such mm -hmm. and just you know a little bit more um, out there and stuff. Um, I love that 70s show um, series. Uh -huh. And I, I don't think you've seen it, but there's a... The, the, the first show, Bob the Neighbor, uh -huh. comes in. And for the rest of the show, he had just done a perm on his head. So for the rest of the show, mm -hmm. it's this Italian guy, big mm -hmm. Italian guy, with a perfect, like, freaking perm in it on his head, dude. And um, like the leisure shoot and the whole thing, it's so classically yeah, cheesy. It is, and it, it was awesome, dude. It's and it just makes you laugh the whole thing. But it, whatever. And, just... and that word right there encapsulates from about 1976 to about 1979, and that is cheesy. Everything, everything looked cheap because it was cheap. But we really honestly thought that we were just styling and profiling. I say we in the collective sense. Yeah. I'm a blue jeans and t-shirt kind of guy. You know, if it weren't for my mother, I wouldn't have had matching belt and shoes. Because I just, that's not me. You know, I've got one pair of slacks, two pairs of slacks hanging in my closet right now that I take out and wash when there's a special occasion and the rest of the year they collect dust, you know? <laughs> so, so I can, so I can get an, uh, uh, an affirmative from everybody in the chat and from Mark here on the show that no one here has ever or ever owned a leisure suit and wore it. Yeah. No, not me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, let's see. Now that I was 15 through about 17 during that time, 18 during yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was, you know, nah, -uh, no, I had, uh, I had blue jeans and that was about it. And, uh, wore boots or tennis it, shoes. It was the older dudes that, that were, were doing that. Right. Well, you had several different, I mean, I don't know what it was like in your high school. We had several different groups that tended to hang around with one another. You had the city kid cowboys who had never seen a horse, let alone ridden one. And they had the Ford Broncos and wore the cowboy hats and had the boots and everything else. We called them goat ropers because <laughs> that's about the only thing. That's probably the biggest animal they'd ever seen in real life, you know. 
um, and then you had the disco kids, and then you had the stoner kids, and then you had just everybody else. And I was yeah. lumped in with the everybody else crowd because okay. I didn't, I, I, I'm not, I'm not very good at getting in on fads. You yeah. know, I've never owned a Rubik's cube. I never had a pet rock. I never did any of that kind of stuff. I was the weird one I, at 14 and 15. I was playing the Beatles while everybody else wanted to listen to something else. Yeah. I, I'm, you know? I'm, I'm with you. Although I did match the songs of the eighties while in the eighties, listening to the heavy metal. I also did dip into the sixties I mean, a lot. Whereas my 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 friends would not touch that stuff whatsoever. Yeah. So I did have that, you know. Um, now, you know, just thinking about it, and as far as the grouping, it was the jocks. Mm -hmm. The yeah, I forgot stoners. that I left them out. <laughs> yeah, there was the jocks, the stoners, the loners, and that was your basic, and then the nerds. You yeah. had. Yeah, we had the nerdy crowd too. But, you know, surprisingly, the nerds weren't really the ones who were getting picked on. I think people were afraid of them, you know, because they had that look like they knew something about your mother, you know. <laughs> they, they, the nerds weren't really the ones who got picked on. The it, the it was the regular kids who got picked on because they just didn't fit in with one of the crowds. You know, you're a nerd. Okay, you're a nerd. You're a jock. Okay, you're a jock. You're a goat roper. Okay, you're a goat roper. But the regular kids just didn't really fit in with any specific crowd. You know, we had. But. There was a cool thing. the The girls would would, um, hairspray, there. And I don't know if that's a throwback to maybe the fifties, that it came back in in cycle. But in the eighties, they had just they'd tease the hair so that it was huge mm -hmm. um and they go to school like that and hairspray was like the go-to thing there was no just hanging down you know just normal hair well, it was it, all it was cultural uh i grew up in uh fremont california and it was multicultural i mean there was you name the nationality and they were there they were represented but this was about the time that, and again, we're talking like 75 through 79 when I was in high school. This was the time when Charlie's Angels was huge. Mm -hmm. And every blonde girl in school tried to have the Farrah Fawcett thing going That's on. That's funny. All Everything all feathered back and sprayed. You, we called them helmet heads because it looked like they had 30 coats of hand rubbed lacquer up there, you know. It was just not a hair out of place and it stayed there. You know, the wind would come up and the side of their hair would go flip, you know, like that. <laughs> but none, none of it moved other than that, you know. <laughs> Turn her head real quick and it was like her wings popped out and then flopped back down. That's funny. Um, but um, then you had, and it was the guys who did the afros that cracked me up the most. Because I'm not kidding you, you know, the, 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 it's like, who do you think you're kidding, man? You don't know a ding dong thing about an Afro. And, you know, half of the class is walking around looking like Bob Ross. That's you funny. Know. But that one always mystified me. But, but that takes a lot of you work. To do that. Yeah. What would possess you to do that? You can't just make it look like that. You have to, <laughs> you have to really work at getting that, that hair to do that. And keep it, you know, and sleep what, what in you, it. Yeah, sleep on it, then get up the next morning and do all this stuff with it and everything. I ain't got time for that, man. I get up, take a shower, shake my head, put a part in it, whichever direction it wants to go today. That's the way it goes. And then I'm gone. I'm out the door. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> Insane. You know. <laughs> Kilroy, okay. Kilroy said that he still has an afro. <laughs> yeah. Well, some people have curly hair. I don't. It would. It's absolutely would be fake on me. It would help to have the yeah, but if you have the hair completely straight with no curving whatsoever, that's, you're in that's trouble. Me. 
that's me. I mean, look at this. <laughs> yeah, you won't. You you, you don't you go would, nowhere. You'd best you you be, you know, and you don't know if a lot of those people back then simply went to like a wig shop. You don't know. No, you're right. I don't. But because uh, you know, I'm sorry, dude. There's no way so many people can work you know, it. You know, the the funny part about it is, it wouldn't be bad if you came back from summer break and there's a bunch of kids with afros. But they didn't do it during Southern break. We're uh, Southern break, summer break. We're talking like, you know, <laughs> they had their hair parted down the middle, trying to feather it back on Friday and came back with an Afro on Monday. Da, 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 da. Like, what? <laughs> you know, like, hey, dude, what's who going do you think on? You're kidding. <laughs> it had to be shocking, dude. I'm sorry. It was, you know, it was like, you're not fooling anybody, you know, and you're not cool. You look like a doofus. But did even the teachers start wearing the freaking uh, hairstyle? Yeah, um, Everybody started to. Come on. I, I had a mixture of teachers, um, generationally speaking. I had yeah. teachers who still wore the white shirt, the black tie, and the black jacket. Okay. And then I had younger teachers who were, you know, uh, just about oh, seven steps away from being hippie. I mean, they couldn't get away with the full hippie look. Because, you know, school and parents and all that mm -hmm. other stuff. But um, I don't know. It was kind of a combination, kind of a mixture of generations in there. But I don't remember any of them having an Afro that wasn't natural. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. And, and it wasn't that tight. Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? A contrived look, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, I mean, it's just one of those styles. I don't know, you know, I'd be surprised if those two things would come back leisure suits and afros. Well, don't, let's not help it, okay? <laughs> I mean, I'm already. I'm, but then again, all you have to do is rename some stuff. I mean, like everybody now in the woodworking, not everybody, obviously, but a good portion of people in the woodworking community, they'll get something done and then they'll take a propane torch and they'll burn it, take a wire brush, scrub it all off and then put a clear coat over it. Now, because it's called Shosugi Ban, it's hip and it's cool. Yeah. We called it dark pine. When I was growing up, we did the same thing. You burn it, take the brush to it to knock off any char, two or three coats of urethane, and you're done. It's yeah. 70s, man. Now imagine a whole house that way. <laughs> Every piece of furniture, state that, that burnt, dark, dark look with I mean, the fake gloss poly, polyurethane over it. Oh, my God, it was bad. Now bringing up the platform shoes again. Yeah, you missed my description. I mean, a redheaded guy with freckles named Duffy walking around with an afro, platform shoes, and his uh, polyester shining in the sun with 11 gold Chains. chains around his neck looking like a Mr. T starter kit. <laughs> that, what a nightmare. Yeah, that it was the case. I mean, I, you, had, I don't, you had guys that were five foot seven like me looking like they were six foot two and it was all shoes and hair, you know. That's funny. I I, I don't see it coming back yeah. personally. Now yeah. anything's possible. <laughs> but I don't see it. It's just not practical. I don't either. And some things we need to leave behind. Okay. The wig thing needs to be left behind. You know, you know that's another subject that uh, although we <coughs> kind of circled uh you know round two but things that will never again happen um culturally um, a unified experience type thing like that yeah and 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 the reasons why because right i mean attentions are divided between so mu much stimuli well i i <sighs> I'm more and more I'm saying never say never simply because I've seen some goofy stuff come back. Some of it was real short lived, but it did have kind of like an afterlife until people figured out on their own just how cheesy this really was or how 
dumb it really was and kind of backed away from it real fast. But some things I don't think will ever go away. For instance, tie-dye. Tie-dye is never going to go away. I've and never been a, a big tie-dye fan. I don't have a lot, but I have a little bit of tie-dye, and I think it's cool. It's fine. It's great. I don't think blue jeans will ever go away. I mean, we've been wearing them since the 1860s. See, I don't think you, they're ever going to go away. you got to be very careful with saying something will never go away. Well, you got to be very careful because in truth, you can't foresee what great thing is going to happen to replace that's, it. That is true. But so far, but even when people switched over to khakis when they were in style mm -hmm. or corduroys when they were in style, there were still blue jeans because they're good. If nothing else, they're good work pants. They've been around for, for since, yeah. Yeah, since the 1800s. Car painters pants went in and out. Cargo pants went in and out, but blue jeans have stayed. I mean, there are subtle things you can do to blue jeans to keep them stylish. And you've got several different manufacturers, and each of them put their own twist on it. You know, there are some people that love their Wranglers. Other people love their Levi's. You know, you, you've got diehard fans there. That's all there is to it. I just don't yeah. think they're ever going to go away. I don't think the T-shirt's ever going to go away. You don't know. See, here, here's what I, I'll just throw this at you. Last thing I'll say. Okay. I think that I, 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 I agree with, with, with that because it makes sense. However, mm -hmm. I don't know what's around the bend. And one thing's for sure that what I don't know is like crazy of what could, could, could be. And I don't, I don't, you know, move the poss I don't remove the possibility of something like, who knows what's going to happen in the future? Like people walk around like with Greek for some sort of reason, there's like a Greek revival throughout society mm -hmm. and people are walking around with freaking like togas and stuff. And it, like, you know, anybody with blue jeans is going to be looked at like, dude, are you a moron? Who it knows? It could happen. Knee britches could come back, but there's going to be a certain percentage of the population that's going to want their blue jeans. How about elastic -less socks? Maybe that'll come <laughs> make a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> they're so they're already thing. here. They're so already stupid. here. What after like a hundred day use? Uh, but you know it's, <laughs> the uh, it, it, it. There's no accounting for taste. I mean, you know, um, loggers shirts, the long sleeve flannel shirts. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they'll ever go away because there's a time and place for them. Yeah, there's a time. And you place. know, they do serve. They do serve a purpose, and people just like to be comfortable. Yeah, you get the folks. You'll get dressed up. You'll put on a suit and tie and everything. Comb your hair, and everything's great. Then go out and do what you got to do. But that's not how you dress every day. Most folks don't. It, I understand business attire, but even then, you try to be as comfortable as you can. And folks just like to be comfortable. And even something like a one piece zip up, like everybody, if you go back and you watch the films from the 20s, 30s, and 40s of how the future was going to be in the year jumpsuits. 2000, we're all wearing zip up jumpsuits with weird rings around our necks and antennas and stuff off of them. They're a pain in the tail. They so are really you are. Are you telling me you can't see in the future, like let's say 100 years from now, like the whole big thing, and like they have a store for just headwear antennas, space antennas, and you know you have different styles for the ladies. You might yeah. have pink, or maybe orange becomes the the female dominant uh, preferable color, and then Never for the guys, have. maybe they have one with little little spikes, and they can tag them, or who knows what the and they're little. Never antennas. say never. Never say never. You know, I mean that's very possible. But you're going to have a big percentage of the population that wants blue jeans, T-shirts, and cowboy boots. And did, that's all there is to it. Dude, you're wearing, you're wearing last year's antenna helmet. You're, you're so lame. Mm -hmm. It's all I can afford, man. You yeah. know, and like little just – and they float and stuff. What, just, what I'm waiting for is to hear, check him out. He still uses a phone. Hey man, you didn't you didn't do that that brain chip operation, man. You're so <laughs> lame. I you know it, because we find ourselves in one of those settings where I remember back in the seventies, about the mid seventies. Well, no, I'm gonna take that back. About the mid eighties, it was like, what more could they invent? I mean, we've got video cameras, so we can go out and shoot video with. There's nothing. We don't have that. to get it. We don't have to get it developed. 
we just take it right out of the camera and pop it right into the VCR. We can go rent movies, you know, and pay two bucks to rent a movie and not pay five dollars a person to go to the theater. Why would you go to a theater? Let me let me tell you this though, with that that you just said. I think this is at least for this is the first thing that I thought when you said that. Mm -hmm. If we roll back the clock to that time that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're thinking, man, we've got the camera, we got the VHS, we've got, we got. If time were to have stopped as far as advance mm -hmm. te technology, I don't think I would have been any the wiser and would have been content with those items that you're mentioning right now. Quite content to, oh, I'm bored. I'm gonna go to the video store and rent a movie and rent it. Mm -hmm. Listen to my Walkman. I don't yeah. think that I don't think that I didn't know that I needed all the crap that's awesome that mm -hmm. we have now. And exactly. It's my and, and of course you would be content because that's what you knew. That's what you had. That's what you knew. Little did we know the explosion um, that was going to happen. Well, you know, I'll, now Al is saying, yeah, we go to a theater because of the experience. And I will agree with you wholeheartedly on that. Because there are some movies that just have to be experienced with that big screen and the sound system of a theater. I mean, for instance, if you took a kid right now who had never seen the original Star Wars trilogy and you showed it to him on TV, I don't care if you've got a 70-inch plasma screen in your house. It is not the same. No. You see people who watch Raiders to the Lost Ark today. And, but they're watching it on a computer, a laptop, or maybe the, it is absolutely not the same. You need that deep bass from that theater surround sound system to really drive it into you. There are some movies that just do not fit on a TV screen or a computer monitor. They I'll just ask, don't. I'll ask you this then. Talking about all this technology and we didn't know that we would miss it in the world. Mm -hmm. If now they came out with a chip that got surgically implanted into your freaking brain, it's on special now for $99.99, you can have your chip implanted. And they'd implant that chip in your brain, and it had access instantaneous to your um, visual uh, hearing and all and 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 cerebral, and you can go to the internet on your brain, automatic cyborg style, and that's the that's the technology coming around the bend, and you've got the. Would you get it? No. <laughs> I don't want ads forced into my brain when I'm trying to sleep, because let's be honest, the whole purpose for all of it. The sole purpose for all of it, the only reason the internet exists, the only reason YouTube exists, the only reason television or the radio exist is for advertising, to get you to part with your dollar. That's the only reason it exists. So you, if, you're, you're thinking that you'll have your implant and then dude, like it'll say, um, buy yeah. softer Charmin paper nope. on sale right I, now. I don't want not. that in my head when I don't want it. <laughs> See, that's the whole problem with it. And, and not only that, you have ethical issues too. I mean, yeah. people can hack into a phone from a hundred yards away fairly easily. Yeah. You don't want them hacking into your cerebellum, okay? <laughs> no. Now we're getting a little bit crazy here. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, Steve just said it. I can't keep hackers out of any systems now. I don't want my brain hacked. Exactly. You know. <laughs> and Steve is, I mean, uh, Greg just said, and you won't even get the COVID vaccine. <laughs> Hell no, you wouldn't get an implant. You know? Well, that's why I'm asking... Uh... Uh, um, Mark, because uh, you know it's such a drastic thing, you know. But if if in the future you're gonna have your naysayers, right? Like anything, and I'm say one. The, say the vac vaccine and such. Oh, you're gonna have your naysayers. No, and mm -hmm. and that same difference with with mm -hmm. anything that comes out new. Mm -hmm. But at a certain point, yeah, you're gonna have your holdouts. Oh, oh yeah, but. 
it becomes part of the so you'll have well, cyborgs. Well, but you'll also have people who say, Show me, let me see it in action first. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, because I'll be honest with you, the first time I ever saw a cell phone, and we're talking the old flip phones, the first time I saw a cell phone with a camera on it, I thought, mm -hmm. What a dumbass idea! What <laughs> idiot came up with putting a camera on a phone? I've heard some dumbass ideas in my life. That's a dumbass idea. But this was before the technology developed, and it was easy to get it, A, off of the phone and into a computer. <laughs> then it became easier to email it to yourself or to text it to somebody. But in the beginning, you couldn't do that. You could only look at it on the phone. How many? Yeah, exactly. Now, how many useless beeper calls did you, you know, unnecessarily make when you got your first beeper if you did and just like the phone when i first got my first cell phone mm -hmm. it was um a nokia so it was like that little one mm -hmm. it was, and it was so dude, it was so cool i am so and i bought i was reluctant to purchase it but everybody started having phones that they could carry around and mm -hmm. i was a, a i was a holdout with that too i was like i don't need that crap but well more people and so I would make calls. Yeah, I'm talking to you on my on my uh, cell phone. Yeah, this is my cell phone number, by the way. Okay. Yeah, it just yeah. sounded cool. It sounded important. Yeah, and well, so I remember it wasn't. that. <laughs> I'm a dinosaur in that way too. I got a cell phone in 2001 because I was the job I had. I was working a route, driving around fixing slot machines in bars, convenience stores, gas stations, things like that. And I was radio dispatched, but my route was so way out in the boonies, you know, you couldn't, uh... I wasn't always in radio contact. I wasn't always in radio range. Mm -hmm. So I knew my luck. I would break down somewhere where I was out of radio contact. So I figured I needed a cell phone. So that's why I, my wife and I got our first phones right. and it did happen a couple of times. And I'm glad I had that mm. then move fast forward. Uh, we moved up here in 2012. I was working in real estate. I had to have a cell phone. Right. But the day I retired, our cell phones went away. I do not have a mobile phone. I don't have a cell phone. I have one phone number for a landline here at the house. Wait a second. Because there is absolutely no worse thought to me than being that easy to get a hold of 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm going to have to agree with you, but honestly, at the same time, if you don't have a cell phone, how are you going to take pictures of yourself when you're out and about at Walmart? Oh, I have one, but I have no <laughs> service on it. Oh, so you take the phone no, as a camera? I no, I, I use it around here as a camera. If I just want to take a quick picture of something like the shed or, oh, look, I got it painted. I'll go out and I'll use the phone, yeah. zap, 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 come back in. It's hooked up to Wi-Fi. I transfer it over to my computer and I'm done. Yeah, this this uh, this you phone know. is exactly that. Yeah. So for that, I will give it. Yeah, I got a uh, Samsung Galaxy S7. Yeah, and it's it's great. And Greg says it has an off button. Yeah, but I don't need to worry about it. If somebody wants to call me, they know my number. If I want to talk to them, I'll pick up. If I don't, they can talk to the machine, and I'll call them back as soon as I care. There's nothing that important that people need to have access to you 24-7. I totally agree with that. Um, the byproduct of this connecting to the uh, – and by the way, one thing that I just don't – I can't tolerate, last thing I'll say, that I can't tolerate is being contacted by random mm -hmm. like robocalls or yep. freaking this or that. Like I, I can promise you – that I'm not, I'm not purchasing whatever. I'm, it's not going to happen. I will, um, if it matches, and I guess that's what they're looking for. If it matches your criteria, but um, even then, <coughs> I'm very still. So there, okay, have you ever bought anything from a telemarketer? Anything at all? Never. Me either. Ever. It, me either. But it must work. But, or they wouldn't keep doing it. So if you want to stop the robocalls, stop buying what they're trying to sell. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, 
well anyways we we've 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 taken it to the limit take it yep. to the limit take um it, it was a good it was a fun to the limit one more time yeah we hope you guys enjoyed it you know um we'll and some of y'all are nuts some of y'all are nuts <laughs> what happened oh with their answers and stuff like that well greg said he would have uh he would send up smarties and but i got to ask you greg um before we take off, I got to ask you, Greg, because Canadians, I don't know if Canadian Smarties are the same thing as American Smarties. Um, Smarties down here are little sour hard candies to usually get for Halloween. And they got like a dozen of them wrapped up in clear cellophane. Okay. But Wait I know. Second. Are they the chalky ones or are they like. Yeah, the, the chalky one. Uh, like a, you know, like um, a firmer version of Tums, you know. <laughs> okay. But they're kind of sour. Yeah. Now, um, but I know in the UK, Smarties are like a large M&M. Interesting. They're different. So I don't know what a Canadian Smartie is. Or is that just some guy from Montreal who thinks he knows it all? See what I did there? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't want it, but you saw it. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we'll wait for Greg to answer that. Sorry, I know you wanted to split, but that 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 no. I saw that. And yeah, Frankie says sort of like sweet tarts. Very yes, similar to the sweet tarts. Yes. Wait, the sweet tarts were the bigger ones. Yeah, they came in the roll with with the um. Well, they the came in a package, didn't they? No, the the, the 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 um sweet tarts weren't they the long roll and then they were the long round tubular roll with your aluminum foil within the right yeah I yeah I do remember those way back in the yeah I do remember though but now they come in like an envelope they come in like a pouch okay Greg says no just like M and M's okay yeah that's that's completely different well, yeah we don't get those smarties down here. Mainly because the, uh, the name was already taken. Oh God! So, well, the Neko wafers, Neko wafers, yeah, yeah. So well, but those, if I remember, those were the chalky ones. They were very chalky, and it came in a in in a um, wax wax paper, yeah, paper, yeah. I used to love all that stuff, dude. I cannot sit and I can have one little candy, you know, but I can't uh -huh. sit, dude. That stuff will knock your stuff in the dirt, dude. Well, it just depends on what your priority is. Oh, peeps. Those are so great, dude. It's Easter season. Pro tip. The chicks. Doesn't work so well with the bunnies, but the chicks. Buy you some peeps chicks now. And save them for 4th of July and roast them over the campfire. Wow. Well. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you saying goodbye. No, that's go we're ahead. we're good. Listen, we'll catch you next time. Be sure to go over there and um, over there. Be sure to get your extra uh, shows in if you want over on our website, trampledunderfootpodcast.com. Way back machine button. We'll catch you guys next time. Yep. Be safe. Have a good one. Take care, y'all. <laughs>